Look, I am sorry. Let's just start the video this way that there are YouTubers out there and that are people that are telling you not to manage the one hormone that always goes substantially over range and is problematic for men on TRT, which is estradiol. I'm sorry. I'm sorry these people exist. I'm sorry they can't look out of their own myopic viewpoint, influenced obviously by their cultish ideology. It's just very fucking weird. I almost think sometimes some of them are frauds. Like, how could you have seen a thousand people or two thousand people or more and think this way? It's either your ideologic and you won't budge no matter what or you haven't seen that many people. Because in my work and looking at bloods and looking at people's experiences all the time, usually four or five a day, I'm just getting new client after new client after new client or repeat client after repeat client. I mean, I'm not seeing people go above 50 and have perfect erections. I'm seeing people, as I've always said, be in that 20 to 35 sweet spot and then the boners work well. So I'm sorry for those people. Don't know what is wrong with them. I don't know like what, I don't know what the deal is, but I'm gonna show you a couple things real quick. At the penile base, okay, in this particular study, which I'm gonna show you, this is a study that those guys will never reference or even acknowledge exists. They'll just like spit out some sound bite, like some program sound bite. Estrogen is cardioprotective. Each unit increase of estradiol was associated with a decrease of 0.11 minutes of erectile quality, erectile function at the penile base. Now you'd have to convert that from minutes to decimals, by the way. And so like I've got a converter right here, 0.1, we'll call it 0.1 and 0.12 between these two. That's between between a six and seven minute inhibition of erection quality and blood flow at the penile base from each increase, each unit of estradiol increased in that study. We're gonna break that down, but importantly, Arimidex, the drug that is given to us as people on TRT to lower estrogen, is a drug made for extreme situations. Because in those situations, breast cancer, etc., you've got to lower serum estradiol really significantly and you've got to starve the tissues of estrogen so that the ERA and ERB receptors aren't being bound to significantly so that, you know, basically metastasis can't continue to happen. It's like those drugs given to guys on TRT, it's like, this is why everywhere you go, you'll hear, oh, my joints are hurting, my back is hurting, I have a headache, I have fucking head pressure, I've got neck pain, I've got tendon pain, you know, I completely lost my libido, I've got ED from taking too much Arimidex. All those stories are real and they happen because this drug is not meant to lower estrogen estrogen on TRT. But if this is one of the most effective things that we got, and it's kind of one of the only things we got, maybe we have other things too, but sometimes you just need tried and true. I'm just going to pose the question because in the last three months, I've got 46 guys that have been able to recover their boners. What if you need to microdose it daily? Yep. Sit back, relax, strap in. Because for you over responders to Arimidex, you can't get your erection straight. You've tried every dose of TRT. You've gone down into oblivion. You've gone back up. You've tried Arimidex at various doses. You get a side effects when it goes down. You still haven't resolved the issue. Eh, this is going to solve your problem. Because hey, boys, who doesn't want to make boners great again? Before we get into the video about TRT, I am a specialist. I'm surgical with protocol design regarding TRT. You can hire me for either a call where I then design your protocol after some fact finding or three months, six months, one year, even one month, one-on-one -on -one programs. Cortex Nootropic Stack, my brainchild, potent instant stimulant. If you want to support the company, the channel, as well as get a crazy nootropic that turns on very quickly that I built and carefully formulated, it's down in the description of this video. Go buy some. Same thing with Torque, all day motivation, hardcore energy, replacing people's modafinil. I mean, I built a very sick stack here down in the description of this video. Go snag a bottle. Okay, so one milligram of Rimidex. What, what do we got? 0 0.5 milligrams of Rimidex. These are the usual doses. 0 0.25 milligrams of Rimidex. And then at the lowest, 0 0.125 milligrams of Rimidex. These doses, okay, for some people, like do totally fine. Guys run 150 a sip, split up into twice a week injections, intramuscular. He runs 0 0.25 per injection. And that guy's got rock hard boners. His libido is great. He feels great. He has no estradiol side effects, uh, minimal water retention. And you're like, I wish I could be like that guy. Yeah, I wish I could be like that guy too, because I'm an over responder to Arimidex. What's happening in those cases, by the way, is those guys are metabolizing the drug not like significantly fast. I think these people that respond super negatively to even like regular doses of Arimidex, they're meta first of all, the drug is too powerful. But secondly, in some cases, the drug their their metabolism of the drug is just kind of abnormal. Um, one of the mechanisms by which you can avoid having to use an astrazole, and some people do have a reaction to the astrazole, whether it's the medication itself or their metabolizing of it, you know, not usually, not normally. Regardless of metabolism, what is happening in those people that take with their TRT protocol 0 0.25 milligrams of Remedex twice weekly, which would crash other people into absolute depressive hell of low estrogen oblivion? What's actually happening in those cases is they're able to lower the estrogen just enough 
into the Goldilocks zone, where everything functions and their dick is happy and their libido is flaring. And then here's the critical point. Keep it there. Listen, I'm going to make a statement. So like, just stop what you're doing and focus on this one. If you could, if your issue isn't prolactin or a central dopaminergic issue or vascular issue, which if you're not a 67 year old that smoked for 45 years, it's not a vascular issue. I mean, most guys on TRT that we deal with at least are young. The resolution to your dick problems on TRT, specifically morning erections, nocturnal erections, erections during sex, random erections, spontaneous erections, erections to the touch, as well as psychogenic erections, is lowering the estrogen a little bit to the Goldilocks zone, but then keeping it in the Goldilocks zone, specifically as androgens are rising. I just gave you the formula. This is what happens with those guys that are taking 0.5 once a week or 0.25 twice, twice a week and everything functions great. They get their boners, they get their libido, they get they have their cake and eat it too. It's like TRT is working great for them. They just don't respond super excessively to a Rimidex. It's just enough. Goldilocks zone, stay in the Goldilocks zone. But for those of you that can't do that, and I'm one of those people. I mean, the highest I've ever taken of a Rimidex, so that's, I think, 0 0.36 or something. And that was good for a couple iterations, and then it ended up pushing it below 15 picograms per milliliter, and I was in trouble. I'm going to give you the protocol to get in the Goldilocks zone, but importantly, stay in the Goldilocks zone. As androgens rise, the estrogen doesn't commensurately rise. It stays in its Goldilocks zone, adequate enough for you, for the brain, cardiac tissue, for joint tissue. You still have some aromatization going on, right? But just not excessive aromatization, just not the aromatization that pushes you over. Well, then you've got, you know, ED from being on TRT. Before we do that, though, I would like to point you to a paper that is the only paper if you really need to understand this and you need to separate, to sort of latch off of the teat of your YouTube guru that has been telling you to not manage estrogen and that he thinks that, that his clients or whatever do fine at 50 picograms per milliliter, 55 or whatever. It's called the effect of estradiol on penile erection. It is a cross-sectional study. And what they show is that each increment upward of estradiol reduces both at the tip to a lesser extent, the penile tip, but uh, more importantly, the base of the penis, erectile continuity. Okay, you, you've got you've got inhibition of erectile function for like considerable time as you increase the estradiol. Like if if there was a study, people are like want the study to show this. Like you want pure validation that estradiol above a certain range, especially as it's increasing, is causing the ED that you're having on TRT. This is the paper, guys. In it, it makes a critical point, and it goes the following. This point, coupled with the fact that the corpus cavernosum, which is penile tissue, it's like that thick part in the middle that engorges with blood when you have an erection, vasculature and urothelium have extensive ERs. These are estrogen receptors, boys. Significantly more, here's the crazy part, significantly more than other steroid receptors, particularly around the neurovascular bundle, right? So you've got more estrogen receptors than you have catecholamine receptors, then you have androgen receptors, then you have progesterone receptors, you have any other steroid receptors that exist in penile tissue, you've got more estrogen receptors. Now the neurovascular bundle, okay? Think of it just how it sounds, right? You really have neuronal and uh, receptor site activation, uh, control of the vasculature of the penis to an extent, various activity, specifically around controlling blood flow to the penis is happening in the neurovascular bundle. Here's an image of it, okay? Again, it's a little like, well, for people that have stomachs that can't handle shit like this, or like, I don't know how to rate this, but like, you kind of have to see what this bundle is. You got a bunch of estrogen receptors in that bundle, all right? Estrogen bound to the, the steroid receptors in that bundle heavily, heavily influence erectile function. Interestingly, though, they go on to say, because this is the, the argument that all the folks that think estrogen shouldn't be touched, which is utter lunacy, by the way, utter fucking lunacy. They think if you got if you got high estrogen, that means you must have low testosterone. So that's the reason for your ED. Nah, man, past a certain range in estrogen, no matter how much testosterone you have, you're going to have erectile issues. So this suggests the presence of erectile dysfunction mechanisms are separate from, separate from, and in addition to central testosterone inhibition, okay? Because elevated estrogen in a natural inhibits testosterone, right? Via hypothalamus pituitary, specifically a pituitary mechanism. The ED mechanisms here, likely ERB, ERA binding at the neurovascular bundle, are separate from testosterone inhibition. So it's not just that you have low testosterone because guys on TRT have high testosterone. It's the estrogen, guys. It's the estrogen. But as I pointed out earlier, and listen, if you really want full validation of this, you should actually take an hour and go read this study. If you want to, again, de-latch from the teat of the YouTubers that are telling you to not control estrogen, then please read this paper. But, you know, here's one last critical part, and then we'll go to the Arimidex strategy. All right, multivariate analysis showed that a unit increase in E 
was associated with a decrease of 0.04 minutes, okay, in the tip. So that's preventing erectile quality in the tip. You've got a reduction in erection and blood flow, basically facilitating an erection in the tip as you increase units of estradiol. Now, 004 minutes in the minute to decimal conversion is somewhere between three, it's somewhere between two and three minutes, okay? So you've just knocked off in the tip uh, in terms of blood flow and erectile quality, two to three minutes just by increasing estrogen a little bit over your baseline. Here's where it gets really crazy. Okay, so after adjusting for, I think that's uh, total total cholesterol, uh, HDL, LDL, FSH, PRL, uh, which is prolactin, testosterone, luteinizing hormone, and P, which may be progesterone, and a unit increase in estradiol. So each unit increase in estrogen was associated with a decrease of 0 0.11 minutes of erectile quality sustained erection continuity at the base of the penis, where it really fucking matters. Go to the uh, minute to decimal conversion, and 0 0.11 minutes, which is between 0 0.1 and 0 0.12, is between six and seven minutes. You just lost between six and seven minutes of erectile quality each unit of estrogen going up above your range. One of the things that I've been paying attention to for quite a long time is the people that are microdosing Arimidex on Reddit and having great results where they have stable E2 in their Goldilocks zone. Again, this is the whole point. Lower it to the Goldilocks zone, not below and not above. The trick is keep it there. These guys have figured out how to keep it there. And it's, I don't suggest you do this because it's a little cumbersome, but essentially what they're doing, I'll just shrink myself a little bit here, uh, is they are putting one milligram tablet of Arimidex into a liquid solution with an alcohol, usually vodka, and then a, a couple cc's of bacteriostatic water or sterile water. I'm not even sure what they're using there. They're shaking it up and they've done the measurements between how much water is in there and how much uh, Arimidex is in there that each dropper is like 0 0.03 milligrams or maybe even less, and they're dosing that every day. These guys have perfect estradiol and perfect libido and perfect erections on tier T. Like these guys have figured it out. But if you don't want to do that because it's cumbersome and it, it's, I think there's a lot of room for error in that situation. And this is what you do. All right. Number one, you, as I've always said, you get the 0 0.125 milligram compounded in astrazole tablets. You can have your doc send a script to Empower Pharmacy in Texas to get them and then have Empower ship them right to your doorstep. Or it, you can get them through your clinic. Again, have them send that script right to Empower Pharmacy in Texas. Splitting a 0 0.125 milligram tablet in fourths gets you 0 0.03 per, per little piece of a tablet. But I don't even think you should take that. For guys that are extra sensitive to Arimidex, that no matter what they do, they get side effects, joint pain, libido loss, uh, headaches, tiredness, all this other stuff. What I've seen work, and I've just recovered dick function after dick, I'm like the dick function recover wizard, is splitting a 0 0.03 milligram, uh, small little already split tablet, in half again. What you end up with, and this is the microdose, the daily microdose dose of Arimidex. That'll save your TRT protocol and keep you where you need to be in the Goldilocks zone. 0 0.015 milligrams of anastrozole every single day. I know that sounds crazy, but here's the bottom line. I've thought about this from the perspective of being a, a hormone consultant and guys pay us money, right? To uh, consult them, work with them, design their protocols to perfection. That's what I've spent the greater part of the last many years doing. These guys come and say, I'm on TRT. Here's my dose. I've tried everything. Right? I don't want to do the DHT derivatives because I lose my hair super quickly on them, which I understand. It's like they hired me to do a job to get results. I don't care if it's impractical. I don't care if it's cumbersome, which it really isn't. It actually takes about 20 seconds to get the right dose down with a pill cutter and that 0 0.125 milligram tablet. I'm hired to get a result. So I've got guys microdosing 0 0.015 milligrams of Arimidex every day. And guess what? Therein, therein is the resolution of their dick problems on TRT. But here's why. If you can reduce the estrogen enough, this is really the answer. This is another major, major takeaway. If you can reduce the estrogen just enough to get into your Goldilocks zone, but not enough to cause side effects, just enough to get into the Goldilocks zone and stay there steadily, you've won. You've won the infamous battle, the dick battle between you and fucking estrogen. You've won the battle. So I don't care if it's impractical. I don't care if people think it's cumbersome. If you want good results, this is one of the only drugs that we have that is effective at lowering estrogen. Tried and true, you know, Arimidex is tried and true, okay? You're never going to not have aromatase inhibition, you know, with Arimidex. It's going to happen. What happens is we get guys to lower the estrogen right into that Goldilocks zone, okay? Right into the zone where there's no side effects. And then, because this is the critical part of dick function on TRT, we get it 
to hover within that small window. It's a narrow window. Everybody knows that. You're going to see people report that all across the web. Oh, it's 20 to 35 or it's 20 to 45 or it's 30 to 45. Windows are different, but generally a disproportionate amount of people in the window is going to be 20 to 35 picograms per milliliter. Keeping it in that window, even a tighter window, say you could keep it between 23 and 29. Do you know how hard that is? This is why we're resorting to uber microdosing of a Remedex. By the way, Again, as I alluded to before, the guy's taking 0.25 twice weekly and they're in the Goldilocks zone and dick function's great, their libido is awesome, they feel great, they don't have water retention, and you couldn't possibly take that dose. This is going to crash you into oblivion, into depressive low estrogen hell. Yeah, you know what's happening with them? They're getting in the Goldilocks zone and they're staying in the Goldilocks zone. As their, as their androgens are rising from their 200 milligrams per milliliter injection intramuscular on a Monday, as it's just rising the whole time, you have conversion to estrogen, but you have some stoppage via their dose, but not a complete stoppage of the conversion to estrogen. So while some is being inhibited, some is still being converted. You're not completely inhibiting estradiol, and therefore they stay in the Coltilox zone. That is the critical takeaway. This is the strategy. That's the, that's the target that everybody that's got estrogen issues and therefore erectile issues on TRT needs to target. Same thing with guys that are on Proviron, Primo, Masteron. Proviron as an example, right? You're, you're blocking the genetic expression post-estrogen receptor binding, and you're inhibiting aromatase mildly. So when people take 25 milligrams of Proviron, you got two things going on. You got that perfect sweet spot, if they can get the dose right for them, of estradiol. And though, and though, you got more free hormones, specifically more DHT. So yeah. Uh, positive modulation of the androgen receptors, positive modulation of the 5-alpha reductase, isoenzyme 1. So a host of things. Masteron, right? Primo. Let's just take Primo as an example. Yes, does occupy the aromatase enzyme. So people running Primo alongside TRT end up in their Goldilocks zone if the dose is right, because you can go too low or the dose may not be high enough, but they get in the Goldilocks zone and stay there. That's why people swear by DHT derivatives with TRT. All right, so like a lot of the content I make is based on client work. It's based on the studies, obviously. If you really zero into to where it really comes from, it's people's pain points. What are people's pain points? Like the most effective people that are uh, most sought out for consulting in my case or whatever, they've been able to figure out how to solve uh, the most common pain points in one industry or situation or the other. My job as a hormone consultant is to solve pain points for people that are on TRT. I've had the pain points myself. And I'm fucking ruthless about my own body, ruthless. I'll, I'll try the craziest shit that seems impractical. And I come out of that usually with strategies that work. But with clients, it's like people are paying me money to get results. And there's a bunch of things that are seemingly impractical about <laughs> TRT anyway. I mean, if you're injecting a longer ester like every other day, well, that's impractical. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? It's just it's inconvenient if you're even if you're putting cream on the testicles every day. Who do you know that puts cream on the testicles like us, you know, in this sphere? But it's impractical. It's like you can't have sex for two hours. You can't get wet. It's just, just like all these things. So yeah, we do weird things. Uh, hormone replacement therapy isn't as perfected as it could be, obviously. So if you've done everything, you respond negatively to even 0.125 milligrams of nastrozole. You know the estrogen has to lower because you maybe have experimented with it before and you had side effects, but your dick was working well. You know, the drugs you're taking, Ribidex, even Aromacin, they're, they're too powerful. They're not meant for TRT. There needs to be a drug for TRT that does exactly what I'm saying, you know, 0 0.015 or 0 0.03 or 0 0.06 milligrams of nastrozole does. Whoever invents that, billionaire, billionaire, no question. For those people sensitive to those higher doses, go down to even lower doses of Aromidex, still have problems. If you ultra microdose every day. As the androgens rise, you got estrogen that's lowering to the Goldilocks zone, but it's not continuing to push downward because you don't have full inhibition of aromatase, you just have a little bit. This is how you keep estrogen in your favorable range. People scoff at Rand McLean when he goes a milligram every other day of Arimidex. Well, he's having guys pin a mil at once. So as their testosterone is continuously releasing from the depot, it's continuously aromatized, and you got the arimidex continuously inhibiting aromatase to an extent, probably not the whole 70% even in those cases, and they just end up in, in the Goldilocks zone. Now that's rare, and uh, I think that's a high dose for a lot of people, at least I've seen that to be the case. The whole point is, like, whatever your dose you can find, keep it in the sweet spot. As androgens are rising, let them rise. Estradiol's in its spot. It's being inhibited from going higher, right? but not really forced to go substantially lower. <laughs> Boys, that's the critical distinction. And therein, even if you have to ultra microdose 
every single day, a Rimidex is where you resolve your dick problems on TRT. I feel like I've said dick problems a lot in this video and I apologize. If you need to hire me, I've got a TRT specific console. Okay, so it's a call with me. We'll fact find, figure out what's happening. Then I will design your protocol moving forward and put it on an online document for you to go and execute. I've seen every situation under the sun. Whatever your problem is, we'll get you better. Also, one-on-ones for a month, uh, three months, six months, or an entire year. If you gotta do large scale, continuous work, that is what I'm built for. And our job is to get results. Hire me at livecortex.com. And Torkstack, uh, if you want a nootropic that is very powerful that I designed and put together myself and beta tested and ships around the world and people truly love, motivation, energy, focus. I mean, for people to be replacing their modafinil and their Adderall, with Torque, says something about the stack, right? Buy a bottle uh, down the description of this video. Cortex stack also, and by the way, if you just wanna support us, buy the stacks, dude. You're gonna love them and you get to support the channel at the same time. Cortex stack is a potent instant stimulant. It's got some highly effective, instantly active goodies. <laughs> Dynamine, teocrine specifically, among others. Uh, yeah, it's gonna turn your brain on pretty instantly and you're gonna love it. Uh, buy it down the description below or at livecortex.com. All right brother. It's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Much more content coming soon. Live stream this Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern time, right? So make sure you have notifications on. Good luck. Godspeed. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.